Um, okay, so the last disruption that I'm going to talk about is solar. So solar is a technology, just like everything that I'm talking about. I mean, these are technologies. And, uh, you know, I spend quite a bit of time in Denmark these days for whatever reason. Um, but solar, this is a school in Denmark, in Copenhagen. Now, Copenhagen is three degrees south of Juneau. Juneau, Alaska, right? And this school generates 50% of its energy, annual energy demand, with solar in Denmark. So, you know, the excuses that, well, we don't get enough sunshine or whatnot, don't actually, you know, basically, there's so much proof that, uh, you know, in the summer, what do you do in the summer, right? 50%. Uh, do you see the solar here? Where's the solar? Huh? It's the walls. It's the walls, essentially. It's integrated, it's the walls, that's the solar. The whole building is one solar power plant. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, so, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in Alaska. Solar works, uh, and it's very cheap. Since the year 1970, uh, in 1970 it was $100 per watt, and now it's 30 cents. That's a 300 time improvement. Since I, I mean, it's gone down by about 11.5% every year since 1970. And every year, essentially, uh, you know, the propaganda is, so it can't possibly go down further. Guess what happens? It keeps going down further without breakthroughs. This is just the cost curve of solar. Um, and despite all the, you know, who had all the negative press and all that, Solar, the installed base, has doubled every two years since the year 2000. This is on a global basis. That is uh, basically a growth compounded of 40% per year. Doubled every two years since the year 2000. Now, solar is about, oh, one and a half percent of generation. So remember that little internal combustion engine automobile in the middle of that street in New York? It's about 1%, 1.5%. 1 now, if it keeps doubling, and it's doubling every two years, how long, how many years, until solar is 100% of the world's uh, generation of energy? Let's do the numbers. So 1.5%, let's double it every two, two years. 3%, one doubling, 6, 12%, 24, 48, 96. Six doublings. Say I'm wrong by a couple of years, seven doublings, that is, 14 years. So essentially, by 2030 or so, solar, if it keeps growing like this, and remember, S-curves, right, exponential, it's gonna be 100% of the world's energy generation. Whoa, right? Can it really do it? I mean, you can do anything on a spreadsheet, but let's, let, you know, let, let's see the economics, right? Uh, let's do the, the, the trends in conventional energy versus solar. All of conventional energy, nukes and gas and coal and so on, have gone up by about six to 16 times since the year 1970. Six to 16 times up, while solar has gone down by 300 times, right? So when you put that together, since 1970, solar has improved by about 5,000 times uh, versus petroleum and natural gas, uh, by about 1,800 times versus coal. And again, did I say solar PV is a technology? It's gonna keep going down. Um, so, you know, we've talked about this thing called <laughs> grid parity, right? Um, and grid parity is the point at which solar on the rooftop is as cheap, or the same rate or even cheaper than uh, what we pay the, uh, the utility. And, you know, it's important according to Deutsche Bank, by the end of this year, 2017, Solar will, will be at or below grid parity in 80% of global markets. That is not bad for an industry in crisis, right? 80% of world markets, solar, will be at or below utility rates. So it's just a matter of economics. It's going to happen, right? And what a lot of folks are not talking about is that um, companies are going solar because it makes economic sense. So according to PwC, 69% of corporations 
are actively pursuing solar because it's cheap, right? 60, it doesn't mean that they're gonna buy it now, but at least it's in the consideration set. And companies like Apple are going 100% and Facebook and you know, Amazon and Ikea and so on. Why? Because it makes economic sense. Because when you're Apple and you have data centers, your biggest cost in a data center is what? Energy. And can anyone say that they're gonna give you the same rate, the same rate for 25 years? No brainer, right, for Apple to go 100% solar. It makes total economic sense. Um, and even, you know, this is Mandalay Bay Casino, which essentially put up solar on all its rooftop that generates 25% of its energy. And they wanna get off the grid. I mean, they wanna basically buy in the open market because they're like, you know, we can buy solar today, which is cheaper than, um, you know, what we're paying the utility. And so because of this, because we are at grid parity in so many markets, uh, the S-curve may actually accelerate. It may go way beyond the, the 40%. Um, so I invented a new term, right? I call it God parity, not grid parity. Now, what is that? Uh, essentially, when the cost of solar on your rooftop, unsubsidized, falls below the cost of transmission. So think about that. Cost of transmission, which is anywhere from seven to 12 cents, um, anything that is centrally generated, right? Coal, nukes, you name it, whatever. Um, anything, even if they can generate at zero, which is not possible, but if they go to CERN to Switzerland and they bring that God particle and they're able to generate at zero, when you add that seven to 12 cents of transmission, you're still not gonna be able to compete with self-generation. Does that make sense? That's what I call God parity. At that point, and this is just solar generation, solar plus storage, and so by 2020, in places like Colorado, you'll be able to generate unsubsidized solar at four cents. Four cents on the rooftop. Central generation, boom, gone. It's gonna be obsolete because there's gonna be so much generation in homes and businesses, uh, at the malls and parking lots and so on and so forth, right? Because it's gonna make economic sense. Because when the sun shines, and I think it shines here about 2,000 hours per year, essentially there is no cheaper form of energy generation than solar on your rooftop. Okay, so essentially utility scale, gone, right? Uh, anything central generation essentially can't compete with self-generation. And even when you add the cost of storage, which is going down by about 20%, by about 2020, you should be able to buy solar plus storage oh, at about seven cents, seven cents. So solar plus storage is gonna be still less than the cost of transmission. At that point, Everyone, everywhere, is gonna make selfish, you know, when you make the selfish economic decision, it's gonna to be to go solar. And that's gonna happen by 2020. This is only three years away. And that's when the, basically the curve, the S curve really accelerates because it's gonna be in everyone's selfish economic interest to go solar. Um, so every house and business and warehouse and, and, and factory and, and so on is going to have solar because it's gonna be in their best selfish economic interest. Now, what's gonna happen in cities that can't generate 100% of, I'm not saying that folks are gonna get off the grid. Most of us cannot generate all we need, but essentially uh, it's gonna be a distributed, like the internet, it's gonna be an internet of energy, an internet of solar, an internet of batteries. Um, what happens with data centers and aluminum smelters and so on? Well, we still need utility scale. And what is happening in, in large scale generation is that essentially we're falling under four cents per kilowatt hour in solar. Um, you know, and just to give you an idea, solar at about 5.8 cents uh, is equivalent to gas at five and it's equivalent to oil at 10. Good luck competing with solar. Right, and that's at 4.8 cents. Now we're below, way below that already. In fact, um, in Dubai, they announced that 
three cents over 2.99 cents. That's half of 5.8, right? And in, Dubai, in Abu Dhabi, they announced a 2.4 cent ki per kilowatt hour. 2.4, right? I mean, I, I, I spoke with the CEO of a utility who had just signed a three cent deal, and he asked me, do you think I paid too much? <laughs> so now, no, 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 hear me out. In 2009, I published a book called Solar Trillions, where I said that solar was gonna be below 3.5 cents by 2020. And what did people tell me? Yeah, what are you smoking, right? Um, you know, and, and, and that was in 2009, and guess what? We blew past that, okay? And that sounded insane in 2009 when solar was at 30 cents, but all you needed to do was do the cost curve of both solar and capital costs, right? So at three cents, there is nothing, nothing that can compete with utility scale solar at this cost. Not gas, not coal, nothing can compete with solar at three, oh, with three cents, period, end of story. Um, so essentially anything, any new investments uh, have to go solar because any other investments are gonna be stranded. Any nuclear, any coal, any natural gas is gonna be stranded in a place where you have sunshine the way you have here, you know, at least in, in the desert. Um, and not only that, um, solar, some folks are saying, oh, but what about storage? I mean, you can only generate during the day. What about in the evening? Well, guess what? Uh, Tucson Electric just announced solar plus storage at four and a half cents. Four and a half cents, gone. Everything else, gone. So solar, distributed solar, because of the economics, is gonna eat everything. Because it's gonna make economic sense. And that's gonna happen in most places by about 2020. It's already happened in places like Australia. Australia, solar residential, is 25%, 25% of homes in Australia have solar. I mean, the equivalent here would be 20 million houses, right? Now, in Australia, transmission is 12 cents. Solar is seven cents. So the concept of God parity, which again, sounded crazy three years ago, is already here. I mean, it's already happening in, in, in some markets around the world. Um, and of course, speakers are already obsolete. You know, peakers generate at 20 cents, 40 cents, 70 cents. And when solar plus storage is four and a half cents, uh, you know, this is pure economics, right? It doesn't make sense to build peakers anymore. So let me, uh, let me wrap it up and let me go back to the future. It's 2017 and we're here. A lot of the technologies that I'm telling you about are still in the one to 2% or so market. Uh, globally. In some countries, like Germany, it's 50% or 30%. In Australia, residential, it's 25%. But globally, it's about 1%, 1.5%, which leads mainstream analysts say, not going to happen anytime soon. But the economics are already here. I mean, the, 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 the unsubsidized solar, the economics are already here. Um, and this is not an energy transition. This is a technology disruption, and it's gonna happen very, very, very quickly, and the tipping point is gonna be about 2020 or so for both energy and transportation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.